so hepatitis a is an important illness and uh, what is happening is uh, it is getting more common these days because of uh, some kind of uh, pan immunosuppression uh, that is happening in the population and in the last 2 3 years also there was uh, some kind of uh, uh, low prevalence of hepatitis a and this year it has gone up uh, it has gone up for one reason one reason is that uh, people's antibody titers have come down people's antibody titers have come down and uh, they are more susceptible uh, to the infection now. So usually hepatitis A spreads by the fecal oral route and uh, especially more common uh, in uh, contaminated uh, water supply, food supply, and especially in uh, areas uh, where pilgrimages happen, people uh, come in pilgrimages. Uh, so these areas hepatitis A is more common. Usually the most common symptoms is uh, that they're presenting is uh, fever and generalized malaise and, uh, you know, nausea, vomiting. And uh, the typical uh, feature of hepatitis A is prostration. So they are appear very sick. They appear very weak. They appear, uh, uh, they appear uh, very much uh, having lack of appetite. And uh, you may even see uh, ictus on clinical examination, and uh, they will have right uh, upper quadrant pain and tenderness also. And uh, this right upper quadrant pain and tenderness uh, may be self-limiting. Uh, all it requires is reassurance. In majority of the cases, uh, hepatitis A is self-limiting. Uh, the SGOT, SGPT levels, and uh, PTINA levels are rarely getting elevated only in acute hepatocellular uh, uh, failure uh, the patient goes uh, develops an elevated inr and altered sensorium so this is a that is called acute fulminant uh, hepatitis so that is a rare uh, occurrence and it is seen in patients uh, hospitalized in the icu with for severe hepatitis a majority of the cases it is self limiting and it requires symptomatic treatment and the patient usually do well in one or two percent cases, it triggers uh, acute, uh, you know, uh, fulminant hepatitis. So again, uh, just uh, keep, uh, just remember the symptoms, uh, the nausea, vomiting, fever, diarrhea, and jaundice. Okay. Uh, prognosis and treatment, uh, it may last several weeks, but majority of the case uh, times it has good prognosis. Only thing is we are seeing uh, hepatitis A in pregnancy. Hepatitis A in pregnancy, when uh, in pregnancy, they tend to have a dual infection, hepatitis A and E. And in those patients, uh, acute hepatocellular failure chances are higher. So in a normal adult, uh, it is a self-limiting illness. All you have to do is uh, treat the treat the symptoms. So the next tropical illness that we are seeing is uh, commonly these days is uh, again there is a resurgence of typhoid. So typhoid is usually Typhoid is uh, usually occurring in, uh, again, uh, when there is a fecal oral contamination, when there is a poor oral, uh, when there is a poor hand hygiene. And it is very much a uh, common occurrence uh, in uh, the summer or in places where pilgrimage happen and when where the source of uh, water, food is usually contaminated. So the bacteria that cause typhoid fever infect the digestive tract and are passed from the person's uh, feces to feces, person to person it transmittable. And uh, in the first week, uh, we have fever, headache, cough. In the first week, we have fever, headache, uh, and cough. And uh, in week two, we have highly fluctuating fever and uh, we'll have delirium. Okay. So in this part, uh, uh, we, we expect a lot of cutaneous symptoms. There'll be rose spots on the chest and abdomen if the patient is fair. Uh, and uh, in week three also sometimes you'll have high fever and uh, in this third week we'll have dangerous dangerous intestinal complications like perforation so typhoid ulcers and perforation they usually happen in the they usually happen in the second week ending or third week okay so again uh, treatment uh, right now uh, all the fluoroquinolones are working for uh, typhoid so ciprofloxacin works for uh, typhoid and uh, Sometimes uh, in the third week, if the patient presents late to you, uh, if there is a perforation, then you have to go for a surgical procedure. Okay. So the next common that we are uh, seeing these days, 
uh, the end of 2022, we are seeing uh, cases of drug resistant malaria. So I think um, prior to the pandemic, uh, we had uh, one or two cases in six months. But uh, after the pandemic, uh, I don't know, uh, because of the improper uh, waste disposal or uh, improper upkeep of uh, some localities in the town uh, and uh, some uh, drainages breeding the mosquitoes, acting as a breeding ground for mosquitoes, malaria has gone up again in this part of the country. Um, so what is happening with malaria is... Uh, the symptoms are very typical. Okay, so they you have a non non localizing fever. So um, non localizing fever means a, a fever without a localizing source of infection. For example, if a patient is having fever and cough with expectoration, you can go for the respiratory tract and maybe he's having a pneumonia. If he's having a fever and a decreased appetite and a stomach pain that he might be having uh, appendicitis or any of the hollow viscous injuries or pyelonephritis or the pancreatitis or cholecystitis or any other symptoms or any other organ. So fever that doesn't get localized to any of the systems, that is the respiratory system, gastrointestinal system, urinary tract or skin and subcutaneous tissue, no abscess, no cellulitis, so these are called undifferentiated fevers. So previously, malaria was one of the most common cause of undifferentiated fever along with dengue in India. And now we are again having uh, a bounce back of malaria as well. And this time, it is drug resistant. We are seeing pocket substance. So <laughs> along with fever, the symptoms begin like a flu. There will be fever with chills and sweating, headache, nausea, vomiting, and and uh, coughing symptoms occur in cycle okay so fever rash muscle and joint pains are uh, very much common in malaria and uh, the main uh, tnet over here is there is something called cerebral malaria so cerebral malaria is characterized by uh, fever with altered sensorium with uh, warning signs like uh, you know uh, abdominal pain especially uh, right hypochondrium pain hepatitis altered sensorium and uh, renal failure these are all the symptoms of severe malaria okay so the treatment of choice drug of choice for uh, malaria right now is uh, uh, artisanate uh, combination and derivatives especially uh, for falciparum and uh, all the vivax malaria if a patient is having any dangerous symptoms drug of choice will be artisanate group and with artisanate uh, IV, uh, you have to uh, give, you can combine other drugs like lumifantrin and uh, other uh, specific and non specific anti malarials. And uh, other uh, symptomatic care, supportive care, you have to be giving. And apart from that, uh, diagnosis of malaria, you can do it by either a rapid uh, histone protein based test or you can also use a, a thick and thin smear. So rapid test uh, assessing histone proteins are quite a bit, quite a, very much accurate. And sometimes you have to go for a thick and thin spear of uh, blood to identify the malarial parasite.